Good morning. As I said earlier, when I walked in here, it's a great day to be alive, to glorify God, tell us of his faithfulness. I want to open with a scripture. This probably come to be one of my favorite passages of scripture found in Proverbs. Proverbs 4.23. I would, I would challenge all of you to make this scripture your own. Put it on your refrigerator, put it over the visor of your car. I'm reading in the Passion. So above all, guard the affections of your heart, for they affect all that you are. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being, for from there flows the wellspring of life. That's a mouthful. It's a mouthful. I want to talk this morning about testimony, the significance of testimony. I've talked a little bit about our soul and the significance our soul plays in the triune man. I had several conversations in the last few weeks that have provoked me to talk about this this morning. I wrote this down. The challenge of our faith is not the inability to hear the Lord, but it's the willingness on our parts to listen to the other voices. Let me say that again. The challenge of our faith today is not our inability to hear God's voice, but rather our willingness to listen or hear other voices. There are so many opinions, ideas, ideologies, theologies that are competing for our attention and ultimately competing for our affection. I just said in that scripture, above all, guard the affections of your heart, for from there, they are all that you have. They affect all of you. Whenever the Lord does a miracle, something miraculous, he's trying to anchor the affections of your heart, and ultimately anchor your soul to him. Why? To show you that there's another world out there that we don't see. I believe now more than ever that there's there's an awakening to our senses as believers. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that this morning. The affections towards him. He's training us in a superiority in the way we think of the unseen realm. The Apostle Paul said this in 2 Corinthians 4.18. Well, we do not look at the things that are seen, but at the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So there tends to be a conflict between these two realms I see today. The natural man and the spiritual man. And for years in my own life, I wanted to do away with the natural man because I was not happy with who I was in the natural. I was, I was you know, my testimony, I was very insecure as a young man. I, I, I'm so blessed to know David and Jerry. They have such a wonderful relationship as father and son. And I'm sorry if I embarrass you both this morning, but that's an awesome thing. I didn't have that growing up. I'm just being honest with you. Many of us didn't. Right? Brian's shaking his head. Some of us can relate. But the reality of it is, that affected the affections of my heart. That affected the way I would give my testimony That affected so many things I wasn't even aware of. It's not that the natural man is evil and the unseen is great, but rather that they need to be joined together in a partnership. You can't deny the fact that you're flesh and blood. You can't deny the fact that you're the truth, that you are a natural being but you're also a spiritual being. 
And for years, I really, I really had a hard time with that conflict. I was trying to be something that I wasn't. When in reality, I just needed to learn to yield, to listen to the right voice so I could come to a place in secure knowing that the only affirmation I would ever receive would be from my Father who's in heaven. Because he's the only one that can truly give us that affirmation to know who we are when we look in the mirror. I didn't know who I was when I looked in the mirror. I just didn't. I want to liken it to, um, you know, growing up on a farm, I shared with you my parents were born again, spirit-filled Christians. My dad are really later in life recommitted his life to the Lord uh, through a full gospel of businessmen's breakfast with Chuck Colson as a guest speaker. But before that, he lost his hearing at the time I was born, and there was just a lot of, there was big gaps there in our relationship. So I remember in the natural, my dad still had to go out in the field and plant a seed. But my mom was interceding to the Holy Spirit for a supernatural crop. So you have to physically, just like Dan said, sow the seed. But we, God brings the increase. We don't. No matter how good you think you are, he brings the increase. And the same is in our true in our testimony. You decide what kind of influence you have in this world around you. Faith comes by hearing God's voice, not your own. And sometimes our own speaks too loudly. It did in my life for too many years. And it really affected the way I talked. It affected who I was. I want to read you a couple of scriptures you're very, very familiar with. The first one's from Revelation 12, 11. For they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives even unto death. The second one is found in the same book, chapter 19, verse 10. This is John talking now. And at, at, at this I fell face down at the angel's feet to worship him. But he stopped me and said, don't do this. For I am only fellow servant with you and one of your own brothers and sisters who cling to what Jesus testifies. Worship God. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I remember the day specifically that I got the revelation of that scripture. The testimony of Jesus being the spirit of prophecy. In other words, when I testify, if I share my testimony with you, it's going to release into the atmosphere the spirit of prophecy. How many times have you received a prophetic word from the Lord and seen it come to pass? It's just as powerful. Testimony carries with it such miraculous power. Testimonies can change current events in your life. Testimonies can change current futuristic things in your life. God had to deal with the way I did testimony. In the Old Testament, you know, testimony translates this to these two words. It's three words. Do it again. The Greek translates to do it again. The word testimony. There's nothing more powerful the, the word testimony carries with it the power to change present events, as I just said. Why is it when you hear a testimony, those who carry a prophetic gift have a strong desire to prophesy? Testimony and prophecy go hand in hand. It's so powerful. It's the, one of the most creative spiritual ways God can use us here on this earth to change people's lives to point them to Christ. <clears throat> when we minister out of power, like a service like this, there's a corporate anointing. I can pray, I can prophesy, because it's much easier in the corporate, corporate setting where there's two or three, he is there. Then it's a different thing when you're all alone at the mall. Nobody's around you, or you're at a gas station pumping gas, or you're at your workstation at work. There's no worship team. 
Pastor Jerry's not up there. You're all alone. Now you're relying upon the authority within you by faith to speak forth. And as you do that, God will meet you with your authority and he'll back you up. But number one, you have to have a passion for God's people. You have to have a heart as he does for God's people. You must display his love, his character, and his nature wherever you go, wherever you walk. A big part of what I want to talk to you about is something that I really asked the Lord, and he said, son, you have to be honest with what I'm about to tell you. I didn't do it with my testimony of salvation, of coming to Christ, but I did it a lot after I was saved for a number of years because I believe the Lord has shown me that I was so insecure. I didn't know full who I I was when I looked in the mirror. Part of it was my relationship with my dad. I suppose it was dyslexia. I didn't have a real good opinion of myself when I looked in the mirror. So I would kind of exaggerate stories. No one knows what I'm talking about. God does not need fish stories. We, we, I had to have a revelation of that. I really did. And the reason I'm sharing this with you and confessing this to you is this because when we speak forth a testimony or a story, which is really what it is, it carries where the, a power to release the spirit of prophecy. And if it's not truthful, then he's not going to honor it. Hear my heart this morning in this. And I really got convicted of this. I told you that it was in the early 90s. I was married. We had children. We were at a New Year's Eve service at my old church. And <clears throat> there's a fellow now who's gone home to be with the, the Lord. He was the pastor at King's Fire. What was his name? Von Gerald. And he's a, Von Gerald was a very deep voice, tall guy. If you knew him, he spoke very authoritatively. I mean, I can't even mock his voice. He talked so deep like this. And Marge and I were in the prayer line at a New Year's Eve service. And everybody wants to receive a word from the Lord. It was just one of those meetings. And so he was going down the line, and he came to me, and he just stopped. And he said, you who are without guile, why do you fear? And that was the first time I received a prophetic word like that that I absolutely had nowhere to turn and run. I I was scared that I got that word, and I didn't know what to do with it. I honestly did. So I I really had to take an inventory of my own life. Why do I fear? What am I scared of? I'm scared of who I was in Christ. And it affected my testimony. I had to make myself look better when I would tell a story because of the insecurities I carried within my heart. Guard the affections of your heart for they affect all that you are. Maybe that's why this scripture is so real to me. You hear what I'm saying this morning? I'm talking about this because I believe that there's a lot of God's people. I've been in the church a long time, pretty much my whole life, Everybody has a story, Dr. Fount says. Everybody has a story, and they're all important. But if we're walking around like I did for years with fears and insecurities, the stories are not, either you'll be silent, you won't want to share your story, or you'll do what I did, and you try to fudge your story. Just another wise way of saying, I was a liar. Because of my insecurity. Is that for me, Pat? Don't exaggerate your testimony. Don't exaggerate your story. The danger of being insecure is you care about what more what man thinks. And who you are before God. 
You see, I was more concerned about the fear of man and how they look at and view me because I just cowered inside. It was part of me being still carnally minded. I'm just going to be honest with you. Matthew 12, 36 says this in the Passion. You can be sure of this. When the day of judgment comes, everyone will be held accountable for every careless word he has spoken. Boy, that was a zinger. Romans 3, 4, absolutely not. God will always be proven faithful and true to his word, while people are proven to be liars. This is willful what man has written about the scripture, man, what is written about the scriptures. Your words will always be vindicated, and you will, be, you will rise victorious when you are being tried by your critics. I said before, we're living in a time where we have to be, have a keen awareness to our senses, the things that are going on around us. I really believe that Holy Spirit is pouring out more and more and more in this hour for those who are hunger and thirst for him. I really sincerely believe this. We've discussed hearing God's voice. We tuned into hearing God's voice. You know, if you're, if you're more tuned in to the world's voice than you are God's, that's going to be your biggest stimuli. You know that. But if you're turned in to what the voice of God is, there's going to be awakening that is the biggest stimuli in the world, hearing his voice. Right? That's just the simplicity of it. Hearing is a perception of what's going on around us. The more we tune into hearing from God's voice, the more we can pull from heaven's realm versus, versus earth's worldly one. We need to live in the heightened awareness of God's kingdom more so than the world's, what we live in around us. I said two weeks ago, you may have a thousand pounds of pressure on the outside of you with stuff going on in your life. Things that you have that are challenges, realities, if you will. But because if we listen to his voice of the Holy Spirit and allow his peace to permeate us, the kind of peace that transcends and guards our hearts and minds in him, as Philippians 4 says, then you'll have a thousand and one pounds of pressure on the inside to balance that out. In other words, what am I saying? Yeah, sometimes life can be tough. And sometimes you just say, it just plain sucks. But bigger is the Lord who's in you than he's in this in the world. Yeah? That needs to be our reality. That just needs to be our reality. Our whole perspective and atmosphere will change if we start walking this way. You'll find that your stories carry with them and a power and authority that they never had before. It happened in my life. It really did. You realize that heaven's bigger than you've ever seen it. You know, I was just, as I was writing these notes, this song that I know some of you will know, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things on earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. We need to get our senses out of the gutter of the world. And mine were. I cared more about the fear of man than I did the fear of God. That's just the bottom line. And it was a lot of crying. It was a lot of weeping. I heard a lot of things that my own wife said to me that hurt, but they were truth. Because for a long time, I was just in denial. Because I didn't know how to deal with the fears or the insecurities of who I was when I looked in the mirror. <clears throat> so 
saying nothing about the addictions of your old life. You're no longer controlled by the world or what the devil does. He has no hold on you. It's just exactly what Dan said this morning. He said, the word of the Lord to you is stand. After you've done all, stand. Sometimes that's very difficult if you're facing things that are just seem unreal, you can't deal with. We have a system, a sensory system. You've heard me talk about Dr. Carol Leaf. I believe God supernaturally, when I had my strokes, gave me, created in me new neural pathways for me to communicate through him by the Holy Spirit that I couldn't naturally do in my own mind because I had brain damage. And if that's the reality of life in our kingdom and our God, then my goodness, what is holding any of us back? That's really the message for this morning in a nutshell. I don't care what you're facing today. And it's not that I don't care, it is that I care. But what I'm saying in that is God is bigger. If you don't make the solution bigger than the problem, the problem is always going to be a problem. And I had a pastor who used to say to me, a problem's not a problem until you make it a problem. We need to have a mentality and a mindset that our solution is bigger than our problem. And if what we speak and the way we walk aligns with that, then there will be nothing that's impossible to you or for you in your life. That's a mouthful. Monday night, we're at the dinner table. Ryan was over, and we were having a family conversation. And um, Brianna, I don't know how it came up, and it's immaterial, it doesn't really matter. But she brought up a conversation that I had with them when we were sitting outside a few summers ago after I had my strokes. And she revealed that some things that I said that I don't ever remember saying. And what I mean by that is that there's some things that happened when I was very young that were very, very painful. And so when I had the strokes and God was doing some things in my life, some of my filters were gone. And some things came out of my mouth that I, in the natural, I never would have allowed anyone in my family to hear. It wasn't against me, it was about me. Something that happened to me when I was very young. And it was very personal. And I, inside I started to weep, and I said, wow. But see, I didn't realize until that point in time how much I carried that I hadn't been dealt with in my own life. We can walk for decades and decades and decades and have things that go so far back that we're hurt and we carry with us. It's exactly, Dan, what you said was so prophetic. Just give it all to him. He is a big, big God. And he wants us to have a powerful testimony and a powerful story. So today's word really is just this. Let nothing steal that from you. Fears of your past, fears you won't be understood, whatever they are. Because the reality of it is, if you know that scripture, perfect love casts out all fear. And when you're set free, you're set free. See, I have no problem talking about this now because I've been set free from it. But when it was there, I couldn't talk about it because I was bound by it. Anybody relate to what I'm talking about this morning? Yeah. It's so good to be set free from stuff. Because everybody has stuff. Amanda and Tim, we're going to start doing marriage counseling soon, aren't we? And the best advice I can give you is pre-marriage counseling, get rid of your baggage now. Don't take it into your marriage. The Lord says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's for us. 
One time I was counseling with a pastor. This is, gosh, before I met Marge. And he had a 20-pound bag of sand. And he kept it in his office. And I said, what the heck is that for, Ted? People like you, Steve. <laughs> he said, stand up. And he picked it up and he put it in my arms. He said, okay. Pretend it's got straps on it. Put it on your back and let's walk around for a week and tell me how you think about it. We carry things we're not meant to carry. We have weights, burdens that are not from God, that he does not want us to carry. My yoke is easy and my burden is light, saith the Lord. That's really, man, I think I broke a record for being early. But I didn't want to make it long. I wanted to make it to the point. Yes, Brian. Yeah, me too. And, and see, that's, that's the ploy of the enemy. You know, Margie or Frank, they don't have that stuff, but you, you're special. You got problems. <laughs> there's, not the, there's not enough tree stands, Lou, to hide in. There's not enough guns to go shoot and blow things up. You got serious problems. Nobody can fix you. I mean, that's the voice of the enemy. And that's what he does. There's nothing new under the sun, Ecclesiastes, he says. His ploy is still the same. To divide and conquer, to separate, to tell you you're different. You got special problems. You got special needs. Yeah. I'm special, all right, because I'm a son of the king. Amen. And your daughters and sons of the king. So I, I, I just pray this morning that this really just touches a part of your heart that maybe hasn't been touched in a while. Because I believe that going forward, that God is pouring out his spirit in a way that is so awesome. But I want each and every one of us to be free from anything in our past that would hinder us, hold us back, weight us down, dump it. Just envision a big dump truck and let it slide out of the bed. Gone. Man, that truck goes, the suspension of that truck goes, I feel so much better. Stand to your feet, move me, would you please?